Hi mate and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 as usual and today I've got another World of Tanks review lined up for you guys. Today uh, we're talking about the Cheeto Tier 6 Japanese medium tank. The Japanese were introduced in the latest update of World of Tanks, Part 8.10, and I played the STB1, the Tier 10 medium tank, on the test server. And if you see my review of it, you'll know that I really, really love this tank, as I did for other two high tier Chinese, um, not Chinese, Japanese medium tanks in the game. Now, basically, the deal with the Japanese seems to be that you kind of need a lot of self discipline and you kind of have to force yourself to grind through all these tanks here but then once you reach tier 8 it's all good news really now the tier 6 tank here the cheeto we're talking about today it's not a bad tank you know it's not very good but it's all right basically the entire tank is quite crap except for the gun which is really good actually it plays somewhat similarly to one of the american tier 6 mediums uh, mostly like the easy 8 here or also the sherman jumbo but it's more like the easy 8 because it hasn't got that much armor if you like the American medium tanks, you'll like the Cheeto. And the Cheeto gets a better gun than the American medium tanks because the, that was the main drawback of the American tier 6 medium tanks was they're really bad guns, they had really bad penetration and so on, but the Cheeto with a gun, it's all good news, really. Now, it's got 820 hit points. That's a huge amount of health at tier 6 for a medium tank. For example, the Russian KV-1S right here, which is a tier 6 heavy tank, gets less health than the Cheeto. That's a really, really big hit point pull at tier 6. It's quite heavy for a tier 6 medium tank, weighing in at 33 tons. Now, yeah, ramming is not like the best idea in the world, but you can ram other tier 6 medium tanks or light tanks. Its engine is not all that powerful really, 400 horsepower, that means that it gets a power to weight ratio of only 12.19, that's really bad actually for a medium tank. This tank is very slow moving, it handles more like a heavy tank. It's definitely one of the slowest medium tanks in the game. Its top speed limit is only 45 kilometers an hour and you will not usually be reaching that with a power to weight ratio as bad as this. The traverse speed is 30 degrees, which is alright, and the turret turns at 36 degrees, so that means combining turret and whole traverse, you'll be able to turn quite quickly and avoid getting circled by enemy scouts, for example. So that's quite nice. The armour is quite a disappointment, 75mm at the front of the hull, 75 at the front of the turret. Now, the turret has got a very sturdy gun mantlet, so most shots of equally tiered medium tanks will bounce off the gun mantlet. The front of the turret, however, if you hit next to the gun mantlet, can be penetrated fairly easily. And obviously, the whole 75mm, not all that much angling going on there, you'll be a able to quite easily penetrate. You just don't really want to hit this lower glacius down here because it's very well angled. And with 75mm of armor, realistically, even a tier 5 tank, you should be able to penetrate this quite reliably. Um, interestingly, this part of the armor here is only 25 millimeters thick. That means that if you've got a 75 millimeter gun or higher, you will be able to overmatch this armor and go through no matter how well it's angled. So definitely go for this armor plate if you've got a higher gun uh, caliber gun than 75 millimeters. It will be worthwhile. And if you can't penetrate this tank frontally, you can always go for weak spots like the driver's hatch here, this little machine gun port. Although it's quite small, actually, and difficult to hit, so I usually probably go for the driver's hatch or the commander's cupola up here. Yeah, so generally the armor is nothing to shout about, really. The side armor, 35 on the hull and 50 on the turret. And on the rear, you've got 35mm of hull armor and 50 on the turret. So... Yeah, you should angle this tank probably about like this, but still, realistically, everything will be able to penetrate you tier 6 or higher, even if you're angled. So, you really cannot rely on this tank's armor. Also, this tank has got quite a big silhouette, if you look from the side and front, so it's quite easy to hit, you can't really miss it, and if the shots hit, they will pen you, usually. Next, we'll move on to the gun, and... If we look at the research tree, we can see that this tank gets the choice of two guns, basically the tier 5 gun that carries over from the Chinu, which is not a bad gun, you know, it, uh, it does the job at tier 6, but the 7.5mm Model 5 gun one here is better actually, it's quite good. 
and you can mount it in the stock turret, you don't have to research for upgraded turret to mount this gun. So let's quickly look at stats to find out what makes that interesting. And they will be comparing this gun to the gun used on the American medium tanks. So here we go for 76mm. So the calibre is 1mm higher on the American gun. And the rate of fire is quite a bit better actually. The penetration is way better on the Japanese gun. That's really, really good because the penetration was the main drawback of the American guns at tier 6. Also, the average damage is quite a bit better on the Japanese gun, so that can give you an advantage. And although the rate of fire is less, the DPM is kind of similar. The accuracy is a lot better. 0.36 is quite good at tier 6, really, co compared to 0.4, which is quite bad, actually, on the American gun. And the aiming time is a lot better on the Japanese gun too. So, yeah, the Japanese gun overall seems to be the, a lot better gun. The only thing that the American gun has got over the Japanese gun is the rate of fire. And the rate of fire advantage is kind of negated by the worse alpha damage. So, the DPM will still be a bit higher on this gun, but not a lot. And you will be able to make a lot more shots count for hit points because your accuracy, aiming time, and penetration is better. So to really set your DPM to work, you have to make each shot count. And the American gun is not all that good at that, really. So the gun on this tank is really good. I really like this gun. It really makes this tank a pleasure to play in a kind of a support role when you aren't taking any hits. The view range is average at tier 6, 360 meters. It's nothing to shout about, but it's also nothing to be ashamed of. And the signal range is really good, 750 meters. This tank gets a tier 10 radio, and although it's quite expensive to research, it costs 10,000 uh, experience, I would definitely get it because it gives you quite a significant signal range upgrade over the second best radio on the tank that you unlock before you get this type 3 co uh, radio it's 200 meters more signal range which is quite good and you will need it because you have to play this tank kind of as a supporter or sniper i feel so yeah this radio i would get it because also it carries over to the tier 7 tank with cheery and it's definitely worthwhile getting it 10,000 is not that much so go ahead unlock that radio and um yeah for equipment I would I put a toolbox on because I just had one lying around. It's not really the best thing to use on this tank. Generally you want to have a gun rammer on any tank really. And also vents would not be a bad idea. For a third piece of equipment you could get the GLD, but the GLD would be alright, but you don't really need it all that much. I'd probably rather get either coated optics or binox rather than the GLD because this gun gets a 2.1 second aiming time you don't really need the GLD so yeah I'd probably go with Binox then for crew skills I would put repairs on the entire crew because well you're, you're really big and your arm is really soft so if you get tracked you'll die quite quickly and uh, then yeah definitely six cents on your commander six cents is really good and you also want to have recon for your gunner I would, well, gonna, there's not really anything you need all that much, probably go for snapshots, which is never a bad idea, or armor would also not be bad in this vehicle. For your driver, I would, I'm quite sure I would go for off-road driving for my second crew skill, because this tank's maneuverability is quite poor, actually, and then on your radio operator you definitely want to have situational awareness because view range is always good especially on this tank here and then for your loader get safe storage never a bad idea so um having talked that stuff through what tactics should you apply in this tank i've already kind of mentioned it i play this tank's a support vehicle from the second or third line basically supporting my uh, allied heavies and brawling mediums at about 200 to 300 meters range you do not want to be in the first line because you haven't got any armor and your tank is huge and you're not very fast so you can't really avoid any shots so yeah you have to you can snipe but with 0.36 accuracy sniping is not all that effective really usually you just want to support enemies and hide behind cover if you get uh, spotted or attacked and maybe even use uh, 
your ally tanks kind of meat shields because you really cannot take hits in this vehicle here. And yeah, you should you sh cannot really play this tank as a normal medium tank because it just hasn't got the speed. It's more like a heavy, really. It's like a supporting heavy tank. Uh, imagine like a British heavy tank, like the Churchill 7 without its armor. That's a bit what this tank is like, I feel. You have to play it as a kind of a supporter. And that's where it does the best. So I've got some gameplay lined up for you guys, where which hopefully showcases exactly that kind of situation. So let's head in and see how this tank does. So in our first game on Prokhorovka, we spawn with quite a nice matchup. It's a tier 6 game and there are quite a few of tier 5 tanks to go around for everybody to shoot at. So uh, it's looking good. Now I spawned all over at spawn point 2 and I decided not to go through the kind of forest alleyway there because it just it doesn't seem like a very good place to go on Prokhorov gun counter battle just because usually all the fight happens at the base so yeah you can see our entire team is coming over to the base and I think that's the best way actually to play an encounter battle on this map so I'm heading for the hill because I hope to put some good sniping and supporting fire down. Now one thing I failed to mention earlier is that this tank's got really good gun depression, you can see it right there. It's I think it might even be 10 degrees or 9 degrees, it's really really good. So you can really put some good fire down from for example ridge lines like on this hill. So that can give you quite a big advantage and actually with your good frontal turret armor, uh, well, not your turret arm actually, but your gun mount, but you can go hold down on this tank actually and take a few shots. So I'm heading over for this uh, bush here, and I'm going in cover behind it. I'm trying to get some shots on our enemies that are trying to cap the base, but I can't see any at the moment. Now I, that was a bit stupid of me, driving over that tree there. And now you start putting effective fire in on that KV-1S there. Very dangerous tank. You can see the good DPM, how fast this tank's gun reloads. It's a bit like the T-34's gun moved up to tier 6. It feels a bit like that. And you can see we are really able to chew up. And there you can see the trollish point three six accuracy coming into play. You can These long range shots will sometimes miss. But you can see the really good alpha damage in this tank for a tier 6 medium tank is really paying off there. I'm trying to shoot down that house, but I decide to rather go for tanks that I can easily hit, like for example that T1 Heavy, but then I decide to go for KV-1S because he's a bigger threat and he's a very low health. And there we go, that's our first kill. So next I go for the SU because he's in one shot range of me, and second kill. And now we'll start shooting up that T1 Heavy tank. Oh, I miss that shot. Come on. Now I move on to the Hellcat. That actually was a bit stupid. I should have probably finished off that T7. F um, oh my days. T1 heavy tank first. And now I'm spotted. I wish they had six cents in this tank, but I'm trapped. I decide not to repair because basically we've killed nearly all the enemies who ever are able to shoot at me. So there's only a uh, SAU firing at me. Okay, I decide to relocate because I realise that I can't really do all that much from this position anymore, but then I see that there's an enemy Type 58 advancing, but I fail to kill him because, let's see who gets the kill for uh, SU-85. And, oh, there's some nice tank destroyers up there. Let's see if we can get a hit on those. That's this new German uh, Waffenträger line there, the Panzer SFL 4C. He's really easy to kill, but I don't manage to pick up a killing shot. Can we get the Churchill? Yes. That was actually quite a lucky shot there. And things are looking alright, but it's still all even. It's 9 to 8, so anything can still happen. And there's the Somnia that's been shooting at me earlier. And our team takes him out. I think the, yeah, the Hellcat got him. So, I'm not going to give up my position up here because the enemies are advancing towards our base. Oh, not our base, but the encounter base. So I really need to put some supporting fire down here from up here. And I know that there's still a VK 3601H down there. Yeah, there he is. Quite a tough knot to crack for a tier 6 medium tank, that German heavy. So let's see if we can get him. I'm trying to snipe his cupola, but it's a very, very small target to hit. Now he's giving me more of his turret. It looks like he's using the Konish gun, I think. 
which is good for me because I haven't got any armor, so even with a 88mm he would be able to easily slice through my armor. And there's a Chino. And oh, I'm spotting everybody shooting at me on the enemy team, so I have to draw back, re-stealth. And, but I really want to have this kill on the Chinu, so I pop back up, see if I can get him. Ah, uh, it's a clutch shot. And Hellcat finishes him off. The Hellcat's on five kills now, he's having a good game. Can we get the Churchill one? Yes! Good. Third kill, and now it's looking very good for our team. The score's 12 to 9. So we'll probably be winning this. I, tr I think I tracked the BK. And one more shot and he should be away. Ah, uh, the Hellcat picks up his top gun. Okay. He played well, so he deserved it. And now you can see I'm down to only two rounds of AP ammo. Oh, well, interestingly, if you look at the bottom side of the display, the premium ammo in this tank is actually a AP ammo as well. Now, that's got an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage is that it's, it doesn't lose penetration as quickly over distance as APCR ammo would. But the disadvantage is that the penetration is not as good. So if we quickly look at the penetration of our premium rounds, it's 186 millimeters, which is quite good, but it's not as good as APC armor probably would be. And the penetration on normal rounds is 155, so it's only a 30 millimeters of pen difference. So yeah, that's it's an advantage for long range shots, but generally it's more of a disadvantage really, but it's quite interesting. So yeah, we end up winning that game, picking up three kills, and I hope that really showcased how you can use this tank as a supporting vehicle. We basically never went into front-on engagements in that game. We just stayed in the second line, sniping or supporting. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed that game, but I've got a second one lined up for you guys because this was only a tier 6 game and I mean any tier 6 tank can do fairly well in a tier 6 game. So let's see how this tank performs in a tier 7 matchup. So it turns out it's not a tier 7 match after all, but a tier 8 match. So this is the worst kind of MM this tank can get. And I'm on Sand River, so I'm platooned up with my friend Redwood Forest. And we're both now tier 6 medium tanks. We're heading up to the kind of the hills or mountains in the northwest corner of the map because we've both got very good gun depression and we've both got kind of supporting guns so uh, or anyway I have so I, I figured we would do well over here and right here you can see the kind of the limitations of this tank how slow it's progressing up this hill I'm going up this hill at 8 kilometers an hour that's really really slow now we really have to make some kind of a push here of we're in a tier 8 game because as you can see to our left side there are only two tier 8 tanks facing off against three enemy tier 8 and one tier 6 scout so we really have to help them. Now there's a Chinu spotted down there as well. So I'm going to head over here to this kind of ridge and try to put some supporting fire down on those guys. And there we go. And here you can see the really good reload time of this gun again. Second shot tracks my... No, did it? Yeah, he's tracked. Third shot and one more shot and then he's down. There we go. So next we we'll try to walk this Pershing probably, but the Pershing is a totally different story. I bounce off the rear of the Pershing, oh, but I managed to kill him. Pick up my second kill. Now an IS-3, I think he's facing me frontally probably, so yeah, I'm not going to waste any shots on him. What I'm doing here is quite risky, but I hope, and yeah, he gets a shot into me, okay, that was... That probably wasn't quite worth it, but on the other hand, now I'm in quite a good um, position. And what I'm doing is I'm not bothering about engaging those tier 8 heavies there, because I know that they can easily outgun me and they've got way better armor. So I'm going to kind of loop round, and I'm going to try to attack this SU-100 from the rear. There we go, he's not expecting me. Shot number one is eaten by his tracks. Shot number two, now I retreat, because he might have this really dangerous 122mm gun and I'm in very low health now so my options are kind of limited I really shouldn't have taken that shot from those tier 8 heavies there 
and you can see my friend Redwood Forest is being held down on the other side of this kind of gorge going through the mountains. So I decide to take some of the strain off him and attack these two heavies, but I can see the IS3 is aiming at me. I'm very lucky that he misses there. And uh, this is basically really dangerous here. I mean, anybody can one shot me on the enemy team right now. But the SC100 is focusing on the Louvre and the IS3 again. And I first want to attack him, but then I see the two Panzer SFL5 spotted. So I go on, um, I go on to attack them. Now I fire a few blind shots of the last known position of the other one, but next I assault the. Ah, uh, what a shame. If he had moved a bit further, I would have been able to pick up the kill on that one, maybe. So, can we get. Oh, he's turned around again. Retreating, not taking any risks here. Going. Uh, well, basically, I'm afraid that the SC100 is pre aimed at where I'm going to appear. But he's not. So, I. get shot to his ass again. But that was a really bad shot there, actually. Hit the rock. But now the way's clear to the enemy base, so uh, my friend and me can basically progress on. Try to get the shot on that Churchill 7, but uh, rocks in my way. And now I'm going to go for Artie, hopefully, or maybe for Ferdinand. I have to see. Can I get shots on the Ferdinand? Oh, yeah. Come on. And right here, you can see the really good gun depression. I could have, I wouldn't have had to progress so far over the slope. Uh, I thought he was AFK, but it turns out he isn't. And you see the really good DPM. Is he turning towards me? It looks like it. Don't want to get shot by him. And next for RT, it's for the turn of RT. We know whereabouts for RT is. He's going to be in the B and B1, A1 area probably. Because our team's basically cleared all the rest of the map. So I'm guessing that he'd probably be in that ditch on my right flank. And he isn't there. He's on my left side so let's see if we can get some shots in on him ah oh, no he's killed before we can get him but still it was a good game and i hope it showcased how this tank can uh, even put down some effective fire even in a tier 8 match now you must say that most of the time we were firing at tier 6 or even a tier 5 tank for chino but still i really feel like uh, we contributed a bit to this game because the su 100 has got quite a dangerous gun and we kind of distracted those tier 8 heavy tanks so that our heavy tanks fighting um, below the mountains could win the battle. So, yeah, I think our contribution was not to be overlooked in that game. Let's quickly check out the after game stats to see how well exactly we did. So, we can see that we got 30,000 credits and 6,500 experience, but that was a time for the first victory of the day. Still, we managed to gets the second highest experience score on the entire team behind the T-34 who got quite a lot of experience actually um, yeah and if we look at the detailed report we can see we fired 20 shots of which 16 hit and 15 penned so that's actually quite a good ratio we dealt out 1600 damage now that's because a lot of our shots hit tracks and so on but still that's quite good in a tier 8 game we received two hits of which two penetrated doing 690 damage we damaged five enemies destroyed two and also picked up 66 spotting damage hooray um yeah so i hope that showcased for you guys that this tank can do well even a tier 8 matchup and uh, actually the versatility of this tank thanks to its good gun and good gun depression now the one major drawback of this tank i feel is its lack of maneuverability if this tank was fast uh, I would be all over the place about this tank, but yeah, it's alright, you know, it's not one of the worst tanks in the game. I really feel like it's not the best tier 6 medium tank. For me, that honour goes to the Cromwell probably. I really like the Cromwell. This tank, yeah, it's alright, you know, but I'm not going to be missing it. And yeah, the gun's amazing. The deal with this tank basically is the gun's amazing, but the rest of the tank kind of sucks. And yeah, it's not a joy to play through, but it's not all too bad either. And I'm definitely looking forward to checking out for other Japanese tanks coming up soon. So watch out for those reviews on my channel. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider rating it below or even subbing to my channel. I would appreciate that a lot. And I'll see you out there on the battlefield. Bye-bye.